Hello, I'm here to introduce you to a few of my friends, some veterans and veterans who have lived through wars of the 20th century. I'd like to start with Eric Maria Remark, who is probably most well known for writing the novel of All Quiet on the Western Front. And in this, he has a character named Paul. This is the German army. He comes back from leave, and the <clears throat> experiences that he has back home in his old familiar place, he's in his bedroom, he sees his butterfly collection, his mom is right there, he sees the piano, and yet, after having been at the front, he describes it as if there's a veil in front of him, that he can't quite connect with his old life. Now, Remark also wrote The Road Back, and this is a book about what happens after the war ends, and they come back and try to reintegrate with society. And the difficulties, the trials and tribulations that the veterans go through, um, to give you just one example, there's a dinner party, and one of these veterans in the front is there. The family is assembled, they bring in the main course, which is pork chops, and he goes into a little reverie and he, he forgets where he is, and he thinks he's back at the front again. He grabs the pork chops, puts his arms on the table, starts chewing away, and just loses himself in the memories. And suddenly he snaps back, and he realizes that these people have all stopped around him, and they're kind of snickering and laughing at him. And he realizes that there's, as he described it, a stone wall in between his experience and then the civilian experience. Now, there are studies about these veterans returning from the First World War that show that <clears throat> those that stuck together, um, particularly in the German army, there were units that came from particular regions, and so they had time coming back from the war to spend time with each other for over several weeks to discuss what had happened to them and to kind of decompress. But there were other units that just dispelled at the front, and they came back individually. And this is similar to, say, during the Vietnam War era, where people would just end their term of service and then come right back. Now, the ones who did not have that dialogue and that connection with other veterans were more alienated, they tended to be more frustrated, and they joined what was known as the Fry Corps, or as one author historian Arthur Wade calls it, the vanguard of Nazism. So these were the paramilitary groups that formed the backbone of the Nazi movement. Uh, another veteran I'd like to introduce you to is Paul Fussell. He wrote uh, two books. He was a World War II veteran, and he fought on the European campaign into Germany, but he wrote a book on the First World War, and he describes the gap or the, the lack of connection that many veterans have in describing their war experiences. Part of this, he argues, looking at cases of World War I veterans, he describes how there's <clears throat> so much of war is very physical, digging and doing physical activity. And when it comes to words, to describing those activities, it's very hard to do that. So he offers that as one example, but he also says that people back home really don't want to hear it. And veterans themselves, particularly his generation, World War II generation, are, were very silent. They did not want to talk about it, in part because they wanted to shield the people back home from hearing the, the horrors of what they had went through. His other book is Wartime, where he describes World War II, an excellent book. So he's uh, someone definitely to look at. Another uh, friend I'd like to call him, uh, veteran I've learned a lot from is Eugene Sledge. He was a, a corporal in the Marine Corps in the Pacific Campaign. And he has written a memoir called uh, With the Old Breed. And in this memoir, he describes his love for his commanding officer, the company commander, Captain Haldane. And he describes Haldane as a square jawed uh, with a five degree or five o'clock shadow uh, all the time. And 
Yet he admired this commanding officer because he demanded discipline, and yet he did it in a respectful, compassionate way. He never yelled, and he got the respect of the troops. Unfortunately, uh, Captain Haldane died in the fighting, but uh, Sledge, in with the old breed, describes the the uh, connection that he had uh, with the, his captain. And Sledge also describes the connection that he had with the, the troops in Company K, his fellows in the, the foxholes of fighting across the Pacific campaign. Uh, he had the opportunity, because he had some college experience, to go to Oxford Candidate School. And he could have left the fighting in the Pacific, gone back to the States, and had a uh, more sane existence but he specifically chose not to do that and to stay with his fellows. And this is why belonging is so important to soldiers. Now, as far as the connection, there, there's often this, uh, as I've described with Remark, this block in between the war experience and people back home. And in Studs Terkel's book, The Good War, he describes Peggy Henderson, who was a nurse who cared for extremely uh, wounded casualties. And she had a friend named Bill, one of her patients who she was caring for. He is an aviator. He had been severely wounded. He lost half of his face. And he was able to connect with other severely wounded soldiers or, and aviators in the club that was set aside for them in the hospital. But it was particularly shocking for Peggy and for Bill was when she would take him for walks out in the streets of Pasadena. And this is a very affluent area of Los Angeles. She would go out to the streets and she was familiar with Bill. Bill had other friends who were similarly maimed, but there were finely dressed women in the community who were horrified. They would give this stare. And she describes it how, uh, Peggy Henderson describes it, how they, they were horrified. They would write letters to the editors. They didn't want to see this the monstrosity, this thing, as they called it. Uh, they didn't like to see the war coming home to them in Pasadena. Uh, another veteran who I've uh, actually physically met is uh, Fred Tomasello. He was a Vietnam, he is a Vietnam War veteran. And he's written a memoir called The Walking Wounded. And I want to share one story that he relates in that memoir. After he got back from the war in Vietnam, he served what was called a casualty call. Casualty calls are something that the Marine Corps does. Other services, they'll send a telegram if someone is wounded or if there's uh, a death in, in the fighting, but the Marine Corps sends a representative, and he was the person to do this. A chaplain would go out with him, but any time uh, a Marine was wounded or died, he had to go visit their family. And he relates this, uh, he, the person who trained him relates a story that happened one time. This Marine in Vietnam had triggered a mine, and it had wounded him. So they went out to the house, told the family. The family was obviously very upset and worried. That call was over. A few days later, they found out, oh, they had to amputate his foot. So any change of condition means they have to go back and do another casualty call. So they went out to the house again, went through the same sort of emotional turmoil of crying, and the, the horror of engaging with this family. Went back. He continued to deteriorate. Then he lost, the, so they had to amputate his foot, then they had to amputate his arm. Went back out to the house. Then it was his eye. He went out five times. The last time they went out, he had died. That scarring experience of interacting with bereaved family members was something that um, Thomas Sella could not forget. And he went through that crucible with his own casualty calls over the next year. However, this is 50 years later. Fred 
right now is in Vietnam. He's just finishing this trip. He went on a pilgrimage back to some of those sites in Vietnam. He met some of the former opponents here. Here's some uh, North Vietnamese army veterans. And so he was able to reconcile with some of the people who were shooting at him. And in fact, this is a bullet that went into Fred's leg. He was an air, aerial observer, so he was a, in a bird dog aircraft with radios. He looked down and called in air attacks and artillery against enemy positions. And while he was up in this observer aircraft, uh, ground fire, this bullet came up, shot through the plane, went, entered his ankle, and went up through his calf into his knee. He came back and was operated on, and the, the docs gave him this bullet. So Fred has been carrying around this bullet for 50 years. On this trip yesterday, he just went back. He went to a bridge in Vietnam, and he let this bullet go. He dropped it from the bridge, symbolizing the healing, symbolizing letting go of the, the horror uh, of Vietnam. And it shows his ability to work through some of these um, amazing uh, encounters and, and um, events that he lived. I met Fred at a retreat, a veterans retreat, that <clears throat> Claude Anshin Thomas, who is also a Vietnam War veteran, has held. He is now a Zen monk. He's written at Hell's Gate, and he holds these veterans retreats over several days. He had, it's very structured, so people write their stories, and they also get together in a talking circle. Now, this is a Native American tradition of coming together in small groups, about 10 people, and there's an object in the middle of the circle. Whoever has that object speaks, and others just listen. So it's a, a space for dialogue or, and for expression. And then those stories are, are written out. At the end of the whole retreat, the, the, everyone writes, but the, sort of the best stories are the, the people who want to then present to a, a whole group at the end of it. Dr. Lair is a nursing professor at FAU. She and I have put a grant in to the National Endowment of Humanities to facilitate some discussion groups with veterans in the local area, veterans, their families, and people in the community, because we're very interested in promoting this kind of dialogue. So it's called Dialogues of the Experience of War. And what, um, I'll tell you a little bit about what we want to do, but what some of uh, Dr. Lair's work involves working as a nurse with survivors of both Pearl Harbor and Hiroshima. And she has gathered their accounts of these survivors, and she's published them in a play form. Uh, this is called With Their Voices Raised. And the Hibaksha, uh, just to give you one of these stories, uh, um, one of the Hibakshas, the Hiroshima victim, he, like the pilot, was uh, maimed by the atomic bomb blast. He lost an eye, had half of his face. Um, and he was talking with his father, and his father said, oh, you should be lucky. You should think how lucky you are. And he got instantly very mad. He was fr very frustrated with this. Lucky, I've been uh, maimed by this uh, atomic bomb. It took him a little while, but he, he began to realize, oh, well, at least I can see with my other eye. And uh, he worked through those initial feelings and felt um, better about it. So the, the course involves, there's two phases to it. One is a preparatory course. We're going to pick some FAU college veterans and then lead them through discussions and studying of literature from the First and Second World War and then later. So wars of the 20th century. And it, there's a lot of practical activities involved with this. And once these, this small group is trained up, then we'll do phase two, which involves working with the community. So we're going to have three different groups from Davie, Delray Beach, and then up here in Jupiter. 
And these veterans who we've trained in phase one are going to then lead the discussion sections, and Dr. Lair and I are going to be a part of it too. So, and we hope that veterans are any, from any living uh, conflict are going to be involved in that, but also family members and people in the community as well. So that's our goal. And I'll conclude here by letting you know about <clears throat> this other resource. Um, Dr. Shea is a Veterans Administration psychiatrist, and he works with uh, veterans groups. He talks, uh, talks with his um, dialogues and uh, facilitates working with uh, individual veterans, but he also draws upon the humanities tradition. And he has looked at the parallels between the Homeric ethics and then the clientele that he works with and in the VA, and he sees a lot of parallels. He's written these two books, about Achilles in Vietnam, looking at the Iliad, and then the Odysseus in America. So looking at the Homeric epics and looking at them through the lens of that transcend. So there's a tremendous amount of really interesting material out there, and I encourage you to connect to people, dialogue with them, and invite uh, veterans to connect with you, and I hope that you're able to um, share that with them. So thank you. <laughs>